if you can get the right target audience with a good offer that is exciting, that excites people, then you've got half a chance. This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good morning, good morning, Graham Arrowsmith. Previously, episode 1490 of the 12 Minute Convos podcast. It's been just two years, two months, four days, five hours, and 15 minutes since we last recorded that conversation. That was then. This is now. Graham, how are you doing today? Oh, it's a wonderful day. I didn't realize it was so long, but two years is such a long time, Angel. It's one of those things that, you know, time goes by. And you just don't realize just how much is crammed into our lives. And I'm sure anybody listening to this will will recognize that in the last two years, so much has happened to you. Mm-hmm. And the same, I'm sure, is, is the same with yourself and all the efforts that you've been putting in with the 12-minute convos, etc. But just the family things in the last two years. Mm-hmm. My first grandchild, Congrats my youngest, having a home and away marriage. Mm-hmm. He married a Brazilian, so there was the home leg and then there was a away leg. Um, And it was wonderful to have, if you like, two marriage ceremonies. And my middle child, my daughter, plans to get married in St. Lucia in uh, about eight months. So how are we doing that? I mean, August is my birth month, right? I mean, you're getting so close to me. Is it that you jump across into Trinidad before you go to St. Lucia? Or while they're honeymooning, you come across to Trinidad? Or do I come to St. Lucia? (laughs) Well, I think you should come to St. Lucia because I haven't got a clue how to get across. Presumably, I'd I'd need a fast boat. (laughs) But um, she has planned to go over there. And Mm. um, so it's going to be very much a family affair. And uh, we really looking forward to it and it's been in mind to give my daughter away for well ever since we've had her so um but she's coming up 30 now so um yeah i'm really looking forward to her her marriage later on in the year now you are what like 35 is it 34 years into marriage um, yeah, something like that. Um, we we got married in 1985, so yeah, it's about 35 years. So yeah, we still we're still batting on. She's still putting up with me. Hmm. Fifty year old blokes. That's where the podcast started, right? I mean, the podcast specifically. It started when you were 50, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, we the podcast. The next 100 days. We started just over four years ago, oh, okay. and it's still going. And we do a podcast every week. I'm very fortunate now because I've hired my first member of staff for my company, Finally Fettled. I used to manage everything myself. And, you know, I got to the point where I'm thinking, well, hold on a minute. I can give an opportunity to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I was very, very fortunate to find a young lady called Ellie. And she is currently just writing up the show notes for for the last couple of uh, podcasts that we did. So it takes a little bit of pressure off me. But uh, and she's far better at writing than I am. I was listening to the episode, The Goals of You and Kevin, right? And uh, yeah, sounds great. I think when we last spoke, we didn't really dig in much to the marketing side of you, which I'm fascinated by, a Mm -hmm. concept that I believe in. And I'm a young guy, so I don't see many people around my age talking about direct marketing. So please open that up for us, please. Well, um, yeah, I'm finally fettled. Um, what I do is I attract people who want to market to affluent individuals. The affluent individuals are those people who, who you know, they probably have the majority of income, or the majority of savings, etc. They're wealthy. And so um, marketing to those people, inevitably, when it comes to direct mail, you have to rely on lists of names and addresses. And to actually get in the UK a good uh, list of names and addresses of people who are affluent is quite a challenge. Um, So the idea is is that I've been working on ways of actually getting, expanding that to addresses only. So I can identify the the wealthy by their address only. So you wouldn't actually use the name, but you would use the address. I also have names. So basically I have a route to both. But the ones where when I'm using an address, I can actually get to to reach uh, many more affluent people. And so direct mail really has has three three parts to it, if you like. 
First of all is the list, or if you like, the, the target audience. It's a bit like a triangle. That's one part of it. The next is the message, and that's another, another angle. Um, and that's basically all about the offer and actually what you say uh, to the individual in, in the letter, on the postcard, however you're going to do it. And then the um, third thing is actually the medium. Now, it, the media itself is is direct mail in this case, but it might be a combination of direct mail and maybe a follow up telephone call or a telephone call followed by direct mail, etc. So there's different ways of actually combining different media. Now, the beauty of uh, this as a marketing proposition is it's very, very focused on outcomes. Mm. So it's not something that you're not going to put your name out there. Or you're not going to try and brand something mm. you're very much going for recognized actions so in other words i'm interested in getting that brochure on the investment in and I, i've got a current client who are growing fast growing trees in germany and mm. they want people to invest in a hectare of you know populated with these trees so within that sort of physical space you're looking at a roughly 5,000 trees. And what we know is these particular trees grow really rapidly and they suck up an awful lot of carbon dioxide, which is really good for the world. Mm -hmm. But also, because they're all fairly concentrated together, they kind of grow very quickly without, you know, and, and, they, and they, they're competing for the light and that they grow quickly upwards. And therefore, as, we, as they're growing quickly, they're spitting out a lot of oxygen. So that's good as well. So the particular client, we're writing... Uh, first of all, we're writing on a with a postcard. This has got to go out, and then we're in a few short days after that, we'll follow that postcard up, which effectively triggers the idea. And when the letter turns up, they'll have some recognition that the actual uh, it's not new to them. So it's something that's oh, I now remember that I got something about that recently. Mm. And then the letter comes up; it's got more information in. And the call to action of both is to go to a landing page again that we produce, and the landing page will actually give them an opportunity of accessing some printed matter to do with the actual proposition. So we'll actually physically send them printed matter. But what's different is we're not just going to put say a brochure in an envelope. We're going to provide them every who responds what they call a shock and awe box and that if you imagine a bit like a shoe box and we're going to provide them with things like uh, well it's a like acacia tree derived honey oh. so you imagine a, a jar of honey an acacia tree bowl uh, with some sweeties in for grandchildren that kind of thing and mm. and then the, the sort of paperwork and other things that might need to go in there, a DVD, like a, div, a, a video that we're doing with the client. So you can see it's not just a sort of a direct mail thing. Yes, it's a postcard. Then it's a mailing with a brochure in there. And then there's a landing page. And then you're going to send a something that somebody didn't expect. And that's that shock and awe box. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, they only really need one client to say yes, and it's a very successful campaign. Now, I'm hoping for an awful lot more than that. But the way in which we're, stru we're structuring the, the campaign, I believe is going to give them the, the best, best opportunity to actually take somebody who's fairly unknown to being somebody who has, you know, built a sense of appreciation amongst the people we're writing to. How long does it take you to come up with these types of campaign? based on the individual that you're working on does that kind of well, put things yeah. yeah well we obviously every single element takes time and and, and actually have a sort of a, a project plan in front of me that has goodness um 50 or so different elements to it and that's probably mm. that's summarizing some of them and you know from from now shall we say today's date through to when it's actually delivered is probably um I don't know, six weeks, something like that, six or seven weeks. So if, in effect, it's it's roughly about that amount of time. But the actual elapsed time putting everything together, um, well, much less than that. So it's going to be maybe a full week's work. Wow. So it's it's of that order because there is quite a lot to do with copywriting and design and all kinds of other things. Naturally, other people help me in certain areas. I might think that I'm good at drawing and design, but um, there are other people who are way better than me. So I, 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 I have an idea of what, what's required, but then I'll go and get other people to help. And that's, you know, look, direct mails, there's so many moving parts and so much could go wrong. But I think if you get the general strategy right, and, you know, the idea of putting the postcard before the main letter, yeah. that's a difficult that. decision to make in itself. And, I, yeah. and I've thought about this long and hard. And I I don't know if you've come across the book um, Presuasion by Robert Cialdini, oh, no. but Presuasion, it's almost like you're seeding 
elements of thought. You're seeding a bit of thought with somebody. Um, I think one of the things that I recall from the book, it went along the lines of somebody's doing a, um, like um, uh, like a survey in the street, and I think it was students. And basically, what they what they did is they they asked for an email to get a, a sample of a new range of pop or uh, you know drink, and they got about thirty three percent doing so. So what they did instead is they pre framed the ask by saying, "Do you consider you yourself adventurous and willing to try something new?" Now, can I have your email to have this? this sample of pop and instead of 33 percent it went up to 75 percent simply by pre-framing if you like mm. the mind so, and of course most people think of themselves as, as adventurous and open-minded and so forth so by actually sort of setting up the thing and and so in the sense we're looking at the postcard in this campaign that i mentioned to set up the letter when it turns up as well as a sort of um, a way of actually boosting its impact that the postcard's much cheaper, of course, the letter's a bit more expensive, but the whole idea of it, it works together. It can equally work as a follow-up. And it's, it was a choice. Do we do a follow-up or do we do a pre-swading postcard? Now, I'd mm. like to do both, but the budget, you know, runs to so much. So the that gives you an idea of the kind of campaign that we get up to. Um, but, you know, in the last few years, it's been a good business. and We've attracted all kinds of new clients, charities and so forth, investment companies, all kinds of different um, businesses. So a lot of people are interested in direct mail. Yeah, I appreciate you being the individual that has not stayed away from the thing that you said you were going to do. It's very exciting. It sounds as though, as well, you are very excited oh, I about am. what you're still doing. You know, yeah, when I was young, uh, I got into this market a long, long time ago, and my first campaign was with Lego. And I pulled, you, you know, those little Legoland men. I, I pulled the the, the the feet off off some, stuck stuck the body to the card, and sent the card out to these teachers. I said, "Turn up, uh, find your feet at stand X Y Z at this exhibition." <laughs> Out of the, you know, we, we got about a 30% turn up rate asking for their feet. Wow. I always thought that was a bit cheap of them, really. <laughs> but they but they turned up to the stand and um, we had conversations. And it was a fantastic event. Um, and, you know, obviously Lego at the time, we're really pleased with, with the result. But, the, uh, you know, and that really, it, it told me that, well, if you can get the right target audience with a good offer that, you know, that it, it is exciting, that excites people, then you've got half a chance. Point on the arrow. Arrow Smith. Hey, my mm -hmm. friend, this has been a great pleasure. Before yeah. we leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Well, I would say to you that if you have an opportunity of tuning into the Next 100 Days podcast, then please take that opportunity. And if you want to be a guest, then look us up as well, because we're always interested in talking to some fantastic people. Love it. I want to be a guest. I'm there. Yeah. Well, consider it done. Love it. Wonderful. Well, Graham, again, a great pleasure. A pleasure I treasure. Thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. This podcast is produced by Pod Edits. Visit podedits.com for professional podcast publishing.